Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The White House decision to launch airstrikes in Iraq targeting Islamic State fighters highlighted a distinctly pro-war sentiment in corporate media. The starting point for many of these discussions was the deeply flawed assumption that Obama has been too reticent to use military force, what New York Times columnist David Brooks once called his manliness problem. In reality, Obama massively escalated the Afghan war, propagated an invasion of Libya that has resulted in chaos and violence, and has widely expanded drone warfare in a number of countries. But that history doesn't seem to exist for some in the media, or doesn't seem to matter as much as Obama's decisions not to bomb some countries, especially Syria. Here's Cokie Roberts conveying that conventional wisdom. Well, we're not acting like a superpower. That's the problem. And so that, you know, I, I agree with Hillary Clinton, as you quoted her earlier, saying, uh, you know, if we had gotten into Syria, uh, when the rebels were begging us to come in and saying, here we are trying to uh, secure our freedom, where is America, uh, then we wouldn't have had this group fulfilling the vacuum. Robert's arguments might not add up, but no matter. And no such debate would be complete without seeing John McCain on TV calling for bombing somewhere. CNN host Candy Crowley made a reference to his media popularity. And Senator McCain, um, lots of people, when we have you on, often say, why do you have him on so often? And we say, because he answers our questions, uh, because he, he uh, ex expresses his views quite clearly. The issue is not that McCain speaks clearly. Plenty of people do. It's what he says, like the Iraq invasion was a swell idea, so why not more like it, that seems to endear him to a press corps always ready to amplify such views. The police killing of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and the protests that followed have not been undercovered. Fox News was being Fox News, but elsewhere reports tried to convey a sense of the dramatic police overreaction. It's the scene that photographers captured looked like a police state, using the same tactical get-up and the same weaponry we've come to expect in urban warfare in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, coverage had some problems, some of them quite familiar. Some reports hewed to troubling practices of privileging police accounts and raising specters of unruly mobs. The portrayal of the actions of the Ferguson police on the cover of USA Today was so off the mark that they changed their headline. And upon hearing the news of the arrests of two journalists covering the protests, MSNBC host Joe Scarborough slammed the reporters. But I do know this. When a police officer asks you to pick up, I, I, I can only put, I, I can only, I've been in places where police officers said, all right, you know what, this is cordoned off, you guys need to move along. And you know what I do? I go, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. I don't sit there and have a debate and film the police officer, unless I want to get on TV and have people talk about me the next day. The online community, especially black social media, erupted in pain and anger some of the criticism directed at the press itself. Media were especially taken with the hashtag campaign, If They Gunned Me Down, in which black men posted different pictures of themselves and rhetorically asked which image media would use if they were killed by police. Sadly, some media seemed to feel this was a fresh question when the whole point was that we already know the answer. And finally, death tolls in a war zone are not usually hotly disputed, and so it seemed with Gaza, where a death toll of close to 2,000 people, most of them civilians, has been widely reported. But along come some newspaper accounts to say, not so fast. The Washington Post quotes an anonymous Israeli official suggesting that Hamas-controlled agencies and pro-Palestinian groups are manipulating the numbers and that the real death toll shows half were combatants. No evidence is provided and, of course, no name is attached to the claims. The New York Times ran a remarkably similar piece in which reporter Jody Rudorin refers to one Israeli study that found fewer dead and fewer of them civilians as impressive in its documentation, even though it's incomplete. Well, if the point of all of this is to create doubt and muddy up the picture right before investigations into possible war crimes get underway, then it was a job well done.
but that's not what journalism is supposed to do. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.